Hello again. Welcome to Tech Grounding TV. And I must say, it's nice to be back in the studio with you after a bit of a break. In our last video, in which we talked about phantom power, I mentioned a handy little gadget called a Bright Eyes. This is just an XLR plug, which has a couple of LEDs and a couple of resistors in it. The LEDs indicate the presence or absence of phantom power. I keep my Bright Eyes on my keyring because it's so handy when you're rigging mics and it's the first port of call for me when a mic doesn't work. I checked out my junk box, came out with a couple of items here, a couple of LEDs, these little green ones, a couple of 5.6K resistors, don't have to be exactly 5.6K but that's a safe value, and a Canon XLR male connector. Now these Canons are easier to use than the Neutrik ones because they've got, when you've dismantled it, there's a handy little hole here to put your ring through to go on your key ring. OK, let's make a start. Now this can be a bit fiddly, this job. It depends how good you are with a soldering iron, really. My problem is that my sight isn't very good, so I've got these little magnifying glasses to help me see what I'm doing. Let's take this XLR connector to bits first. We don't want those. Well now I've got the actual connector itself into my clamp, into my stand, and um, I'm going to, the pin. that's pin one, and I'm going to connect the two resistors together into pin one. I think I'm going to twist these together first, these resistors. Twist them together like that. Pop that into there, which is pin one, and there you go. So we've got these two resistors uh, connected now to pin one. Um, because I'm very lazy, I've got to uh, find out which way to connect these LEDs because they are, after all, diodes and they won't. Uh, light up unless they're connected the right way around to the supply. As we know, uh, negative is on pin one and the phantom power positive is on pins two and three. So I'm going to, as I say, be a bit lazy. I'm going to just um, solder on one of my LEDs and make sure that, uh, check out which way around it's supposed to be connected to make it light up. Got a source of phantom power here from the mixer. So if I pop it on to pin uh, two, it doesn't light up. So I've obviously, oh yes it does, yes it does, lights up. And also pin three, it lights up. So that's the right way around to connect it, which is a bit handy. So I think what I'll do next is to actually connect these two uh, LEDs to these two pins uh, to make sure I don't lose my track of what I'm doing. So let's just put it back up here. I've got to neaten all this stuff up, but in the meantime, that will be on there. It's all a bit fiddly. And if I inspect that uh, LED, I should be able to find the same connector. I think it's that one. Put that around there for pin three, which is the middle one here. Whoops. I did tell you it was fiddly. And it is very fiddly. Mm, a bit too fiddly. There we are. All the time hoping that I haven't overheated the uh, LEDs. Let's just check that they both glow when connected to the phantom power supply. So that's that which it does and that one does as well. So we're getting on quite well at the moment and um, all we've got to do now is tidy it up a bit and squash it into the shell. Okay, so 
here we are, we've got the casing and we've got the assembly which we know works. It's just a question of squashing it down and making it uh, all neat and tidy. I'm going to start by bending this resistor back on itself like that and connecting it to this LED. Once it's all squashed into its case, no one's going to see this mess, hopefully. Now, I will solder this. It's, it's not really very good practice what I'm doing here, but um, I'm trying to do it in a bit of a hurry. There we are. I think that will actually work, which is the main thing. And similarly, I'll just pull that away from there so it doesn't short out. And similarly, this resistor here will go to that LED. Got tweezers here somewhere. There we are. It's all a bit agonizing. Now, this is not the sort of thing you'd expect from an electronics factory, but we're just making it up for our own use, and um, if it works, we should be happy. Now, ideally, I d that's not bad. Ideally, I should put a bit of tape around that. The inner ones aren't touching anything, but I'll put a bit of tape around the outside so it doesn't short to the shell of the XLR case. It's a little bit too wide. Mm. Fold it down a bit. It's narrower tape, really. Okay. Try it now. Aha! Let's try once more. Stick it in here. And then if that doesn't work, we'll just... Voila! It works. So, that is probably the worst bright eyes I've ever made. But I... There we are. But I did warn you it was tricky. So if you've got um, um, nimble fingers and uh, perhaps smaller components, that's the bright eyes and it does work. And all you've got to do now is slip your a little bit of um, a little key ring through one of these, which you could possibly drill out if you wanted to. Stick it on your uh, key ring and you've got a bright eyes. That was hard work. See you in our next one. Thanks for looking in. Bye.